Welcome to the Carfection Roundup of the 2017 Frankfurt Motor Show. We've done individual films on the Bentley Continental GT, the Ferrari Portofino and the AMG Project One. But this is, if not everything else, then certainly a good selection of this massive show. Hope you enjoy. This is the Audi stand at the Frankfurt Motor Show and this is the brand new RS4. This is the B9, obviously, in the generations, but it's way going full circle all the way back to the original B5 because it's got a turbocharged V6 under the bonnet. Essentially, it's just the RS5, so you've got 444 brake horsepower, 443 pounds foot of torque, and it'll do 0 to 60 in, I think they're claiming 4.1 seconds compared to 3.9 for the RS5. Audi does a very good fast estate, and it looks, it looks great. I mean, what's not to like about it? Elsewhere on the Audi stand, well, We've got something quite interesting just over there. This is the Audi R8 V10 RWS. And the reason that I'm crouched down here is because it's rear wheel drive only. RWS stands for rear wheel series. They're only producing 999 of them. It's based on the, the standard V10, so it's not the plus, so it's got 540 brake horsepower. No manual gearbox, sadly. It's 50 kilos lighter, but it should be a really, really lovely thing to drive. Obviously, the Gallardo has its rear wheel drive version as well. Can't wait to drive one. This is a TT RS with Audi Sport performance parts, and this is essentially lots of carbon fibre and little sort of dive planes at the front, which I don't really think do much. But in the back, there's obviously this rear wing. But open this up. Has to be the most overwrought, I suppose, luggage restraint. I'm sure there's some chassis stiffening in there as well, possibly. But it's a beautiful piece of carbon fibre sculpture. I like that. That's that's lovely. Only Porsche could get away with this. I mean, this is the new 911 GT3 with Touring Pack. It's exactly the same GT3, just without a rear wing. It's, um, I don't get it wrong, it's lovely. I want one. It only comes with a manual gearbox. It, I like the subtlety of it. It's the same power, same chassis settings, a few different electronics, because obviously you haven't got the rear wings, so they've changed the aero balance slightly, but it's a GT3 without a rear wing, yet the Ferrari around it has been extraordinary. Lots of people saying that the 911R owners will be up in arms because this will somehow dent their, their sort of the premiums that they bought the cars at. Why people are worried about this, I don't quite know, because there were very few people that obviously got the 911R, and presumably they're all wealthy enough to have one in the first place. If you bought one in the premium, why are we suddenly up in arms about this on their behalf? I'm very sorry for them, obviously, but yeah. I'm glad Porsche's done it as well. I'm glad the 911R hasn't just been left as a sort of, sort of the only purest option we have spoken, they have listened. The new Porsche Cayenne. Two facts for you. Rear wing, now with a little air brake. And the brakes as well. There's now a level between the standard brakes and the uh, PCCCB, PCCC, how many Cs? PCCB. It's these with white calipers and a sort of new, I think it's tungsten carbide finish, which is shinier and less corrosive and more efficient, apparently. There you go. There's actually a proper Porsche 4x4 just there. Oh, 959 Dakar. Yes. Thunder power. The SBO department at JLR has so far focused on sort of sports cars and sort of luxury and things. This discovery, however, the SVX looks pretty cool. It's, it's obviously sort of more off-road orientated, you can tell particularly by the tyres and the, the raised ride height and that sort of thing. It's not quite sort of camel trophy levels of sort of extreme, but uh, under the bonnet, it's got a 500 brake horsepower, or more than 500 brake horsepower, supercharged V8. It's just me or that with those tyres. It could be quite interesting. There's an awful lot that's very good about the BMW building hall, whatever this is, small city. Um, but, but this isn't one of the things. Um, this is the i8 Memphis style, an homage to the 1980s. It looks a bit like a BMW art car, but it is not a BMW art car. There's sort of bits of Liechtenstein, possibly called uh, something else in there. However, there is an i vehicle here that really is very good, and it's just over there. Behind me is the BMW iVision Dynamics concept, which is 
Well, I think it's rather good, actually. It's obviously sort of somewhere in the future, but it could be the, the i5 of 2021 or something like that. It's got a 373 mile range, which sounds pretty good to me, and 0 to 60 in around about four seconds. I think it's a very good looking thing. Um, obviously, it's designed to take on Tesla. Uh, the only thing I'm not quite sure about is the kidney grill at the front. Sort of fuse them together and I don't think it really works. Before we get to the M5, we should probably mention another concept that's on the BMW stand, uh, the BMW Z4 concept. It was first shown at Pebble Beach, but this is the first time we've seen it in Europe and the first time I've seen it. And it looks, looks very good. Uh, these rear lights here, it sort of looks a bit like if you sort of squashed an i8. There's still a gap in there um, that you get from the rear sort of flying buttress bit on an i8. The front, uh, the kidney grills are wider than before and the sort of the, the mesh in there looks a bit like uh, what Aston Martin's done actually. Overall it's, the only thing about it, it looks quite big for a Z4. I want, I want this sort of thing to be smaller and more nimble. It doesn't have to be sort of MX-5 small but just a bit smaller. The paintwork by the way is called energetic orange matte, or spray tan as I like to call it. If you want a car with a turbocharged V8 and 592 brake horsepower, you could choose the Ferrari Portofino. But um, you could also choose the BMW M5. It's very nice in here, I have to say. There's some really nice little touches. Um, so we've got these badges on the headrests up here on the wheel. So there's always been the M1 and M2 buttons for the different modes. These are now on some little stalks up here in red, which is yeah, it's very cool. It's obviously four wheel drive, but you can shuffle it around so you can actually just have rear-wheel drive. They're promising it's going to be very rear-biased anyway in the four-wheel drive system. The new car is also uh, 25 kilos lighter, helped by an aluminum bonnet and a carbon fibre roof, uh, the batteries in the boot, and it's got a lightweight exhaust system as well, which can be tuned um, to, be, to be quieter. The looks, I'm sort of split at the moment. I, part of me wants to see a really big, aggressive sort of kind of look, but then the M5 has always been very stealthy, so I have to sort of temper that with the fact that it, it, I, I like the Q car vibe as well. We should be driving it fairly soon, and yeah, I'm very excited by this. It should be good. And now for a short interlude. This is a hall with um, what is called the Wild 70s, and it is stuffed full of just amazing machinery. So we found ourselves in a thunderstorm um, and we found the most curious name of the show, the, the Aspark Owl. Lots of birds you can name cars after. An owl is not something I sort of really associate with a supercar. Perhaps it's because it's silent running. This is an electric supercar, obviously. 1,000 brake horsepower, all carbon fibre body, uh, magnesium alloy wheels and 0 to 62 miles an hour in under two seconds, apparently. This is the Renault RS 2027 vision concept, and it's something that I, I'm not going to try and claim sort of you know, ownership of this idea. But with drivers becoming sort of you know, disappearing inside single seaters and becoming ever more sort of invisible to the crowds, I thought this concept could work. The the whole sort of make the side of the car transparent and see through. There's a bit of a sort of fishnet stocking look going on there. But but the idea basically, so you can see the the feet working away and the arms and stuff. I think. I think this could work. I like it. I mean, it's a very beautiful concept as well. Love the rear end. You can look through and see the air flowing through it. Good work, Renault. One of the stars of the Frankfurt show, which is sort of at the other end of the scale from the Project One, is this, the Honda Urban EV concept. And it, it is really, really cool. It's a little hatchback. We've got some down here. We've got suicide doors. I can't open it because it's open by remote, apparently. And yeah, we are having a chat about sort of there's, there's all sorts of influences in there. The, the, sort of the rear window is a bit of 205 GTI in there. It reminds me a bit of an, sort of an early Seat Ibiza, perhaps, as well. And the wheels, these sort of turbine wheels, which are obviously huge, um, from the uh, Audi A1 Sport Quattro, which wasn't a concept, but it was limited run. It became the, sort of the Audi S1, but they did those wheels for that. And yeah, inside, it's all sort of it's just, it's a really, really cool thing. And they're saying that um, this isn't just a flight of fancy, I think 2019 I heard that um, potentially they want to see one of these on, on the road. So yeah. Oh, the other one last little detail. 
This line runs all the way around here. I'm going to do this old plug here. I like it. It's really fun. Bravo, Honda. Mazda has the best coffee. Next up, a little segment I like to call Hot Hatch Corner, because there are quite a lot of them here at Frankfurt. Um, starting with this, the Suzuki Swift Sport. It's, it's always been great. It's gone from a naturally aspirated engine to a turbocharged engine now. Uh, only 138 brake horsepower, but a lot more torque now. It's 170 pounds foot. But, big news, now weighs under 1,000 kilos, 970 kilos. You can feel it, actually, so the doors they really do feel very lightweight. Still got a manual gearbox and yeah, perhaps I'm biased because I used to rally one of these, but I, this could be a lot of fun, I think. Behind me is the Megan RS, which is 276 brake horsepower, manual gearbox or paddle shift, sort of still front wheel drive, um, so far so normal, except the big change is it's got four wheel steering. So it joins the likes of Porsche's GT3 and obviously the AMG GTR and that is said to be the big step change in this, this new Megane RS. Sport or cup chassis, should be pretty good. This is the Seat Leon Cupra R, now with 306 brake horsepower. It's only a 10 brake horsepower increase, but it's got some um, new chassis settings and stuff as well. Building 799 of them, I'm not quite sure the significance of that number, but it should be very good. Cupras have historically always been very good, particularly Cupra Rs, and yeah, I'm excited by it as you can tell. This is the brand new VW Polo GTI. Now the Polo GTI has historically never quite lived up to its bigger brother, the Golf GTI. This has 197 brake horsepower, but all you really need to know about it is that it's been engineered by a chap called Carsten Shebstadt. Not heard his name? Well, he did the Mark I Focus. He also did the Mark V Golf GTI, the Club Sport S Golf GTI, and the 997 Gen 2 GT3. So he's a, he's a man that knows what he's talking about. So I'm actually really, really excited about this. This is the Mini John Cooper Works GP concept, and it looks pretty extreme, I have to say. There's a lot of sort of, it reminds me of the Metro 6R4, bear with me here, because in that car you could see the original Metro underneath all the sort of the extra arches and stuff bolted on. And it's the same here with, with these sort of add ons. You can clearly see the car underneath. But uh, yeah, it's cool. I love the little roof scoop in there, which is, is great. The, the first two Mini uh, GPs were fantastic cars, so I really hope this does go into production. So there we are, that was all the fun of the fair. I'm sure we've missed some stuff out, but um, hopefully it gave you a flavor of what's here. It's been an interesting show, sort of a couple of standouts, obviously the AMG Project One and the uh, new Honda Urban EV concept, but everything else, there's still some interesting stuff, particularly though, that Pantera GT4. Oh. How cool is that?